Hey friends, it's Miss Kay here again. Today I'm gonna to read to you one of my favorite books in the whole world. It is called Bubba the Cowboy Prince, A Fractured Texas Tale. It is written by Helen Ketteman and illustrated by James Warhola. As I read this story, I want you to make a connection to another story that I know that you've heard. Be sure to stick around at the end for an activity that you can do with your family. Once a strapping young feller named Bubba lived on a ranch with his wicked stepdaddy and his hateful and lazy stepbrothers, Dwayne and Milton. Bubba's stepdaddy spoiled Dwayne and Milton no end, but Bubba worked from sun up to sun down, doing the chores of three ranch hands. Bubba never complained, though. He loved ranching. Dwayne and Milton spent their days setting on horseback, bossing Bubba around. Get them doggies along there, Bubba, ordered Dwayne. Yeah, and watch out for them cow patties, added Milton. You know how Daddy hates for you to track up the house. Now, Miss Lurleen, who lived down the road a piece, was the purtiest and richest gal in the county. She owned the biggest spread west of the Brazos, and she loved ranching too, but it was lonesome work. And after a while, she decided it was time for some companionship. I aim to find myself a feller, she said, one who loves ranching as much as I do, and it wouldn't hurt if he was cute as a cow's ear either. Miss Lurleen decided to throw a ball. She sent invitations to all the ranchers in Texas. Soon, the day of the ball arrived. Milton and Dwayne spent all day getting gussied up in their finest duds. Bubba bow ran himself ragged waiting on them. Bubba! shouted Dwayne. Fetch my bolo tie. Bubba! shouted Milton. Get my boots polished. Bubba! shouted his wicked stepdaddy. Brush them horses and wash that wagon. By the time Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy were ready to go, Bubba was exhausted. Still, as they climbed into the wagon, Bubba asked, Can't you wait for me to get ready? I want to dance with Miss Lurleen too. Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy hooted and hollered. Why, you're sorrier than a steer in a stockyard, said Dwayne. Can you imagine Miss Lurleen dancing with the likes of you, said Milton. Miss Lurleen wouldn't even wipe the dirt clods off her boots with that raggedy shirt of yours, and you smell more like the cattle than the cattle do. Bubba took a look at himself. It was true. He didn't have a decent shirt to wear. His boots were downright disgraceful, and he did smell a bit rough. Milton and Duane were right. Miss Lurleen wouldn't dance with the likes of him. Bubba hung his head. He felt lower than a rattlesnake in a gully. Milton and Dwayne and their wicked daddy went on off to the ball. Bubba mounted his horse and headed for the pasture to check on the herd. The sky was getting darker than a black bull at midnight. It looked like a Texas thunderstorm was brewing. Bubba had just arrived at the cow pasture when a bolt of lightning struck, knocking him off his horse. Bubba was stunned for a moment. But when he picked himself up, he heard a voice. Go to the ball, Bubba, said the voice. Bubba looked around. No one was there except him and the cows. Now Bubba figured he'd bonk the bejeebers out of his bean because the voice was coming from a cow. She chewed her cud for a moment, then said, I'm your fairy god cow and I can help you go to the ball. Bubba sat up rubbing his head. I'd like to go, Miss God Cow, but shoot, I don't have a thing to wear. The fairy God Cow swished her tail, and Bubba's raggedy clothes changed into the handsomest cowboy duds he'd ever laid eyes on. His jeans were crisp, his boots were shiny, his shirt was dazzling, and his Stetson was whiter than a new salt lick. Why, I look downright purty, said Bubba. The fairy god cow swished her tail again, 
and a nearby steer turned into the most beautiful white stallion Bubba had ever seen. Now you go on off to the ball, Bubba, and have a good time dancing with Miss Lurleen. But you'd best be home by midnight, because that's when the magic runs out. Yahoo! shouted Bubba as he jumped on the white horse and galloped off to the ball. When Bubba arrived, the hoedown was in full swing. But every time Ms. Lurleen finished a dance, she yawned. There goes another $10 Stetson on a five cent head, she complained. Where are all the real cowboys? By the time it was Bubba's turn to dance with Ms. Lurleen, it was almost midnight. Soon as she saw Bubba, Ms. Lurleen's eyes lit up. Why, you're cute as a cow's ear, she said. Bubba blushed, then took Miss Lurleen in his arms and started dancing. Dwayne and Milton turned purple with jealousy. Who is that dude? said Dwayne. I don't recollect seeing him before, but he looks a mite familiar, said Milton. Do something, said their wicked daddy. That cowboy is winning Miss Lurleen's heart. As it turned out, Milton and Dwayne didn't have to do a thing because Bubba and Ms. Lurleen were in the middle of do -si doing when the clock struck midnight. Suddenly, Bubba's fine duds turned into the dirty rags he usually wore around the ranch. He looked sorry, and he smelled worse. What is that awful smell? asked Milton. Why, it's Bubba! shouted Dwayne. Bubba turned 14 shades of red, apologized to Ms. Lurleen and ran out of the room. Wait, she yelled, chasing after him. But Bubba didn't wait. He jumped on his cow and lumbered off into the night. In the ruckus, he lost one of his dirty cowboy boots. Ms. Lurleen clasped it in her arms. This is the boot of a real cowboy and the man I want to marry, and I aim to find him. Ms. Lurleen went back inside, and though she asked everybody at the ball, nobody knew who the mysterious cowboy was. Nobody except Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy, that is, but they weren't talking. The next day, Ms. Lurleen went from ranch to ranch looking for the cowboy who owned the boot. When she came to Dwayne and Milton's ranch, both brothers tried the boot on, but it didn't fit. Ms. Lurleen had just climbed on her horse to leave when Bubba rode up. He was dirty and sweaty and smelly from working with the cows, and he was only wearing one boot. Ms. Lurleen jumped off her horse and ran over to Bubba. Try this on, she cried. Bubba took his dirty old boot and pulled it on. Much obliged, ma'am, he said, blushing. It fit perfectly. You're my prince in cowboy boots, shouted Ms. Lurleen. I'd recognize that smell anywhere. Marry me, cowboy, and help me work my ranch. Dwayne and Milton and their wicked daddy threw chicken fits. But Bubba just smiled, and he and Ms. Lurleen rode off into the sunset. They lived happily ever after, roping and cowpoking and getting them doggies along. Before I started reading, I asked you to think about a connection as I was reading. Were you able to connect this story to another story that you've already heard? If you guess Cinderella, you're right. Now here's a quick little activity that you can do independently or with your family. You can compare and contrast the two versions of Cinderella. Remember, compare means to think about what's the same and contrast means what's different. So think about what was the same in both versions of the story. What was different? You can think about the characters, the setting, and all the little details in both versions. You could write these things down and practice your fabulous handwriting, or you could just talk about them.